What's up, quarantinis? Hopefully everybody's safe and uh, having fun during this quarantine. Just thought I'd shoot another video and uh, show you what real life applications are like when you're troubleshooting a furnace. So hopefully it's informational. Uh, if you could, just give me a text or an email or put a message down below in the message column if you like the link click on it subscribe and i could be your youtuber um but no in all actuality just uh message me and let me know if there's a topic you want me to cover or something or uh you want to see in a real life application so here we go let's start digging into troubleshooting in an actual furnace so as you can see i have my beautiful air conditioner and new furnace and we are going to start troubleshooting it and see if we can't figure out what's wrong with it so technically nothing is wrong with the furnace I'm just trying to get you guys to see what it's like in a real life application and not just on the simulator. Um, you always want to start with your thermostat. Obviously, talk to the customer. Get as much info as you possibly get. <clears throat> and then from there, you want to come down, check your filter, make sure it's nice and clean. And then you want to start with your door switch. Make sure you have <clears throat> power to the door switch. And that <clears throat> you can keep troubleshooting because if you don't have power to the door switch, then obviously you have power issues with your panel or something else. The biggest thing is to always remember is sequence of operation. That is huge. Um, once you know the sequence of operation, you can pretty much troubleshoot anything. So the sequence is, is it comes in from your panel to your door switch. Then when your door switch is pressed in, then you have the voltage that comes down here to your board, your transformer, and whatnot so when there is a call for heat and this is the process of how it goes the thermostat has to make a call to the board the board will then send signal to your inducer motor to kick on then when the inducer motor kicks on then it's going to check to make sure that your flue is not clogged and that will close your pressure switch as long as your pressure switch is not an issue your pressure switch will close if you check voltage across your pressure switch when you are troubleshooting make sure your door switch is pushed in but if you read uh, voltage from this pin to this pin then it means your pressure switch is open if you don't see any voltage from this side to this side then it means your pressure switch is closed. You want to have a closed pressure switch in order for your igniter to start lighting up. Once your igniter lights, then your gas valve will turn on. It'll shoot flame across. Then it senses your flame with a great little term we call flame rectification. Once your flame has rectified, then it will send signal back to the board proving that there is flame, so then it'll go through and heat up the burners for approximately, every furnace brand is different, but approximately about 30 to 120 seconds. So once the uh, time is done and you have enough heat in your burners, then your blower will kick on. So, at this point, if everything shuts down um, and you've already gone through, your inducer motor's gone, you're, you've proved that there's a clear flu with your pressure switch, you have flame, the flame stays on, 
for a long time and then the blower kicks on and then it dies out, I would definitely be checking with an amp clamp your uh, blower motor to make sure it's not amping out too too much. Um, and sometimes it could be the board, it could lose signal. So you would simply pull off the heat lead to the board, make sure that that is sending signal constantly through the process. If it's still doing that, you also might have an issue with, and I know you can't really see it, but your high limit switch. Once it reaches a certain temperature, which is roughly 187 degrees, uh, yeah, this one's 180 to, yeah, it's 180 degrees on this one. So once it hits that temperature, it'll open the high limit. So then there isn't voltage going across there, which will shut down your burners, but keep your, your blower going. But if you follow this sequence of operation on any furnace, they're all pretty much the same. Uh, some furnaces do have different bells and whistles with relays. Uh, typically the older furnaces, there's a lot fewer of the older furnaces out now than there used to be. So I wouldn't be as worried about that. Um, but it, you still really need to get a, a grasp on what the sequence is for each individual furnace and that will definitely help you troubleshoot if you do have any issues on your troubleshooting you uh definitely can always call me or you can uh YouTube, a lot of different videos out there. They will walk you through various different types of furnaces. But knowing your sequence of operation will always help.